Introduction to the Lone Goose in the Spy Sea Lin M.O. is like a lone wolf silently watching behind the Japanese spy, watching his every move and repeatedly making them disappear from our land and the world. Chapter 1 Crossing You are listening at NovelFull.audio The night was quiet, and when I looked up from the window, I could see the moon hanging in mid-air. The soft moonlight shone on me, as if I felt the warmth of my mother. Whispering. Smoke slowly drifted past my eyes, as if I had forgotten all my worries in a hazy way. The gentle breeze caressed me, and my thoughts filled the space between heaven and earth. Squeezing. The sound of opening the door sounded like a rat's call. Lin M.O. suddenly woke up and looked back at a big guy, who had an impression but was unfamiliar. Lin M.O. glanced around and exclaimed, Damn it, he was actually complaining in the bathroom. Looking at the scenery in front of him, the low house was silent, and he couldn't get any appetite for the scenery anymore. He turned around and walked towards the dormitory. Lin M.O. lay quietly in bed, recalling these days of experience. He was a traveler, an ordinary person in the vast sea of people in the 21st century, an ordinary university student who was mediocre and about to graduate and enter society. However, he woke up to this unfamiliar world, the Republic of China on January 8, 1934. This Republic of China is the same as Lin Mo's impression, and after understanding it, Lin Mo has determined that he has traveled through the same country. Lin Mo's current body name is also Lin Mo. His family is in Hangzhou, where his grandparents and parents are still alive. Lin Mo is the eldest son, as well as a brother, a sister, and a group of cousin sisters. Lin Mo was influenced by patriotic remarks when he went to school, so he secretly applied for the Central Army Academy, namely Huangpu Military Academy, with his father Yang Haicheng, Ji Fong, and cousin Lin Wengui. Recalling the introduction of Huangpu Military Academy in his past life, Lin Mo always felt an inexplicable excitement deep in his heart. Just thinking about it, I put in a lot of effort in my past life and didn't get into a good university in the end. Now that I'm in the best military academy in China, I can't even think about it in my past life, I studied infantry in a military academy, and after graduation, I can become a lieutenant-level soldier. Ha ha ha. Lin Mo thought and laughed. Suddenly, with a quick wit, Lin Mo thought. Joining the army is about going to war. In his inherited memory, he heard that our student union in this period was arranged to fight against our party on the front line. In his previous life, he joined the party at the last moment of college, but he did his best to enter our party. But considering my current situation, my family is a legitimate landlord, and I graduated from a prestigious nationalist military academy. I will never have a chance to join the party again. Thinking of this, Lin Mo feels like crying without tears. Forget it, let's take a step by step. The most important thing to consider is the catastrophe in a few years. Besides, I can't adapt to the days without a computer or phone these days, let alone the hardships our party is currently living. The food at school these days has made Lin Mo lose any interest but his memory tells him that it is already a good meal. Now Lin M.O. can intuitively feel the hardships of our party at this time. Lin M.O. is now extremely conflicted, wanting to return to our party and not wanting to endure hardship. But what he didn't know was that one day he would be so eager to go back, so eager to endure that hardship. At this moment, he still doesn't know how difficult his path back then was. Of course, Lin M.O. wouldn't understand at this moment, just silently thinking in his heart. If given the opportunity, he would also provide assistance to our party to the best of his ability. Use this idea to comfort yourself and justify your escape. Lin M.O. also knew that these thoughts were evading, but coming from that stable and peaceful era to this war-ridden society, for Lin M.O., ensuring that he and his family survived this catastrophe peacefully was the most important thing. He was just an ordinary person, and being able to do what he could for this country was enough. He was not a god and had no ability to change history. Lin Mo silently thought to himself. 
But when Lin Mo thought of the upcoming war, his heart was filled with fear. As a descendant, Lin Mo had a deep understanding of the brutality of this war. Due to the huge gap in equipment between the nationalist and Japanese armies, the shocking proportion of war losses on the front battlefield, and the loss of millions of lives in this war, these moments reminded Lin Mo of the brutality of this war. Thinking of this, Lin Mo lost the last bit of drowsiness. Lin Mo plans to take stock of his various strengths and see what abilities he has to survive well in this era. Firstly, I come from the future and have many years of study. I have a good understanding of the historical timeline of this era, which is a great advantage. Secondly, in my past life, I studied economics. Although I could only be considered a minor student, I still had some experience in it. Moreover, in my past life, I had a passion for military and machinery, and even went to my classmates' factories to play with it. I also modified cars and made models, so I can still use them. It is still useful in this era. Besides, in my past life, I loved reading various online novels, military novels were not uncommon, and there were also many books in the Republic of China. In the era of information explosion in later generations, the various information I saw every day was of great value to this era. Let's talk about the original owner of this body. Our family is a big family, engaged in foreign trade, and we still have many connections both domestically and internationally. As far as our family's safety is concerned, it's not a big problem. The main problem is to survive this catastrophe safely, and it's best to do something for this country. Thinking of this, I became conflicted again. The simplest way to protect my family's safety was to move them to the rear in advance. However, although I have so many advantages, it seems that I cannot change the fact that I am a soldier. As a soldier, no matter which military I serve in, it seems that I cannot avoid fighting against the Japanese. Thinking of this, Lin Mo also knew that in this era, it was almost certain that he would engage in battles with the Japanese. However, Lin Mo did not resist this matter in his heart. Instead, he had an inexplicable sense of excitement, and he didn't know if it was because Lin Mo lacked understanding of war. Since it is inevitable, the only way to deal with it is to go to Shuyuan www.zhaozhuyuan.com. With this in mind, Lin Mo secretly made up his mind to work hard in his future days at the military academy, not to spend every day in college like in his previous life. Lin Mo calculated silently that he was a student of the ninth cohort in Huangpu and graduated on May 8 this year. He has less than half a year left at the Huangpu Military Academy, and he should work hard. After all, in war, only his own strength is the best guarantee. Speaking of which, Lin Mo in this world, like in his past life, in military academies, except for academic subjects such as exemplary command, tactics, weapons, city building, terrain, transportation, and hygiene that can rank at the top, other practical subjects such as shooting and running are basically just finishing their tales, and they are all on par with his past life. Firstly, the most important thing in shooting is to have good marksmanship in war. Secondly, it is also important to learn how to fight, as anything can happen on the battlefield and one may save their own life. Speaking of which, this body also has a foundation in martial arts. Lin Mo's grandfather is a famous doctor in Hangzhou, from Yunnan. It is said that he had also studied under the people who invented Chu's Baiyao, Yunnan Baiyao, before, but later moved to Hangzhou. Over the years, the country has been turbulent, and Lin Mo was forced to practice martial arts by his grandfather since childhood. However, his strength is a bit weak, and Lin Mo himself does not like it very much. He does not have much practical experience, which is why his grades are so poor. Thinking of this, Lin Mo remembered that in his freshman year, he even joined the school's fighting club, and the school specially invited a special forces soldier to be our instructor. Due to the fact that this club has credits, Lin Mo had to study hard with the instructor for a few years, and in the end, he really learned some real skills. Recalling this, Lin Mo secretly made up his mind to work hard and learn all the skills he had before. Thinking and thinking, time passed by quickly, 
and Lin Mo slowly fell asleep. Chapter 2 Nanjing You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lin Gu, Lin Gu, don't sleep. Aren't we going out today? Don't shake, get up, get up. Lin Mo said as he got up from the bed. Looking aside, he saw his own hair, Yang Haicheng, waiting for him there. It was strange to say that when Lin Mo crossed over to this body, he not only inherited the memories of this body, but also inherited his emotions. It was like he had lived here with this body once, and surprisingly did not have a sense of unconsciousness towards his relatives and friends here, which facilitated his integration into the world very well. Ah hi, what are you doing? Isn't it a day off today? Why are you getting up so early? Yang Haicheng and I were admitted to the infantry department together, Ji Feng was admitted to the artillery department, and cousin Lin Wengui was admitted to the logistics department. Lin, didn't you mention last time that you wanted to take a good stroll around Nanjing City during your break? Why didn't you stop moving again? After Yang Haicheng spoke, Lin Mo finally remembered the invitation he had casually accepted a few days ago. At that time, because he had just arrived in this world, everything was so unfamiliar and unsettled, so he casually agreed. Go there, it's just that I didn't react immediately. By the way, what about the others? I remember Li Changwu and Zhao Pingyan were also going out together, right? Li Changwu and Zhao Pingyan were both Lin Mo's roommates and close brothers in the military academy. Li Changwu was about 1.75 meters tall, from Jiangxi. Zhao Pingyan was from Guangdong, and he was 1.8 meters tall. Yang Haicheng was a little taller than Lin Mo, about 1.78 meters tall. They just got up and are washing their faces in the bathroom now, he said. I quickly picked up a towel and wash basin and walked towards the bathroom. Along the way, I met Li Changwu and Zhao Pingyan walking back, and Lin Mo quickly walked towards the bathroom. After washing their faces and returning to the dormitory, the general dressed neatly and walked towards the door together. When they arrived at the school gate, they presented their student ID cards to the duty personnel and exchanged military salutes before leaving. Due to being a military academy, students are restricted from entering and leaving the school. The streets do not have the same bustling scenery as the surrounding areas of later universities, but there are still some small shops in the vicinity that are operated by local families themselves. Let's go to Mr. Zhang's place and have breakfast. Every day in the military academy, our mouths are fading away, said Yang Haicheng. Lin Mo remembered the breakfast at Mr. Zhang's house and quickly said, Let's take a walk, I'll treat you to this meal today. Although the food in the military academy is not bad, and in this era, the food in the military academy is already very good, eating the same food every day, no matter how delicious it is, it won't take long to get bored. Everyone quickly walked into a breakfast shop on the street. The breakfast shop was only on the first floor, without even a sign outside. However, inside, it was still full of people, most of whom were military academy students who took turns coming out. Yang Haicheng walked inside with Lin Mo and the others, greeting people he knew. In no time, he walked to the courtyard of the small courtyard, where there was a stone table and some stone chairs around. The group quickly went over and sat down. You're here, what are you planning to eat today? An old man with silver hair walked out of the kitchen and said. Old man Zheng, have a portion as usual, Dong Haicheng said to the old man. Zheng Laotu's original name was Zheng Zhanghua. His eldest son accompanied him to run a breakfast restaurant at home, while his second son did business in Shanghai. It is said that Zheng Lao Tu was a private chef of a high dot ranking official in Nanjing during the late Qing dynasty. After the fall of the Qing dynasty, the high dot ranking official also collapsed, leaving him nowhere to go. In the end, he went home and opened a breakfast restaurant. Of course, Lin Mo and the others believed that he was unwilling to go. Brother Lin, Brother Yang, your breakfast is here. All right, let's put it down quickly, we're all starving. Yang Haicheng said to old Zheng's grandson, whose name is Zheng Wenxiang. 
Now in junior high school, Lin M.O. and Yang Haicheng would come to his house to have breakfast whenever they had the chance to come out on weekends. They got to know this kid from time to time. Okay, I'll send it right away. After a while, the table was filled with all kinds of meals, xilong bao, deep dot fried dough sticks, porridge, zongzi and all kinds of cakes. Lin M.O. and his group saw that the food was ready and immediately started eating. Lin Mashian took a few mouthfuls of meat porridge, which was full of delicious flavor. The taste should be the soup cooked with fish and sheep bones, and the kanji was cooked with good rice and fresh meat. Lin Mo picked up a xilong bao and put it into his mouth. With a gentle bite, the soup flowed into his tongue. The whole mouth was full of juice. He picked up zongzi and untied the leaves. A thick smell of ham rushed into his nose without causing discomfort. Ham is the famous Jinhua ham in later generations. Taking a bite makes one feel like swallowing it all together. Other pastries have their own unique characteristics, sweet but not greasy, soft but not loose, making people's taste buds open up. A table full of delicious food is devoured by a wolf, wiping out the entire table. After eating and drinking enough, the few of them didn't want to move anymore and started talking. Lin Mo said to Yang Haicheng, where are we going today? Why, you're not going to the library today, Li Changgu asked from the side. I'm not going anymore. I used to go to the library almost every time I came out, and I didn't even know the way to Nanjing City. Today, I'm going to take a stroll with you all. Lin Mo mentioned that the library is located in Hangu District, Nanjing. There are various books and foreign news newspapers in the library, and even newspapers brought from foreign countries. Lin Mo used to like these things, and he also learned many useful news about the world from his memory. Why don't we go to Zhongshan Road? The three of us haven't been there for a long time, Zhao Pingyan asked. Lin Mo didn't hesitate and replied directly, Okay, I only walked a short distance with you last time and came back. I need to take a good stroll this time. There are many good things over there, but I need to go to Uncle Lu's place first. Lin Mo's Uncle Lu is the head of the Lin family's industry in Nanjing. His name is Lu Xiaoguang. He used to be the housekeeper of the Lin family. Lin Mo's brothers and sisters grew up under his care. Lin Mo sneaked out of the military academy a few years ago. Lin Mo's parents were worried, so they asked Lu Xiaoguang to take care of the industry and Lin Mo Lin Mo would visit Lu Xiaoguang every time he came out. Yang Haicheng asked, that's not a problem. Do we have to change our clothes to play on Zhongshan Road? Otherwise, it won't be fun. Yeah, it's not much around the school. There are also many people wearing military uniforms, but it's too eye dot catching when we reach Zhongshan Road. Let's go back and change our clothes first. Li Changwu also turned to remind Lin Mo Lin Mo thought about it and realized that it was just a few of them wearing military uniforms on a big street, which was too eye dot catching. With this in mind, Lin Mo spoke up and said, You don't need to go back and change. Our clothes have been sitting there for a long time and are almost moldy. Let's go to Uncle Lu's ready-to-wear shop and buy a new one. Then let's have the staff deliver the military uniform to old Zheng's place for storage. We'll come back from Zhongshan Road and take it back to the military academy. Military academies are different from ordinary schools. They usually have less time to leave, so the opportunity to wear casual clothes is naturally less. Sometimes, casual clothes are left for several months. In this era, military academy students rarely have the opportunity to wear casual clothes. It was not until this year that Lin Mo and others finished learning various tactics, physical fitness, and firearms, and shifted their focus to academic courses such as command that they had so many opportunities to leave military academies. Zhaozhuyuan.com Old Man Zheng, we're leaving now. I'll put the money on the table for you, Lin Mo said as he took out three silver dollars and placed them on the table. The others stood up and walked out. Yang Haicheng turned around and glanced at the three silver dollars, and said with a painful expression, 
this old man Zhang's things are really expensive. Every time I come over, I feel a lot of pain. Lin Mo and the others looked down on him, and he was the one who enjoyed eating the most and the fastest just now. It's not too expensive either. You don't have to look at the materials, but you haven't saved any money. Besides, we're not the kind of people who can't afford it. Lin Mo's words are also reasonable. They study in military academies and receive subsidies every month. Apart from the food expenses in military academies, each person can still receive a subsidy of over 20 yuan per month. There is no place to spend money in school, and many people choose to eat well after leaving school. Don't think that 20 yuan is not much. In this era, ordinary people can earn 5 to 10 yuan per month, which is already enough for a family's expenses. 20 yuan is also considered a huge sum of money for ordinary people. A few people left Mr. Zhang's breakfast shop and walked towards the street ahead. At the intersection, Lin Haicheng waved to the yellow carriage driver across the street, and several yellow carriage drivers quickly pulled their cars over. Boss Lin, are you still going to the library? An older rickshaw driver asked Lin Mo, if we don't go to the library today, Lao Huang, you can take us to the Lin's trading company in Shipopa Lane. Okay, Mr. Lin, please sit down quickly. He quickly wiped the seat cushion and invited Lin Mo up. Lin Haicheng and a few others also got on other yellow vans, and the driver quickly pulled onto the carriage and walked forward. The name of the person who pulled Lin Mo is Huang Haicheng. He is an authentic Nanjing native who has been pulling yellow taxis for more than a decade. He often pulls people in this area and met Lin Mo as soon as he came and went. Chapter 3 Uncle Lu. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Lin Mo sat in a yellow chartered carriage, and the scenery around him quickly ran back. Lin Mo looked at this novel world with great enthusiasm. For Lin Mo, who had already been accustomed to the towering urban landscape of later generations, Nanjing in this era was not prosperous compared to later generations. However, looking at the buildings around him, there was still a general special charm, including Western-style buildings, buildings with Chinese and Western walls, and more of a variety of Chinese-style buildings. Nowadays, Nanjing is not the same as later generations, but still retains various century-old buildings. Countless styles of buildings all tell the vicissitudes of this ancient capital. Looking at everything around him, Lin Mo's heart no longer felt the depression of being in a different world, but instead a hint of joy. Lin Mo thought to himself. Coming to this world is not unacceptable to him. After all, his parents had a big brother in his previous life, and he went to college but didn't learn much in the end. Instead of spending time in obscurity in his later life, it is far better to leave something for this country in this world. In my past life, I would at most find a small company and earn a few thousand yuan a month to just wait and die. I also wanted to travel to another world like the protagonist in the novel I read, living a different kind of life. Although I have traveled through different systems and golden fingers like those of the protagonists, I have come from the era of information explosion in later generations, and I also know the history of this era. I believe that I can live a different life in this era. Boss Lin, the business has arrived. Huang Haisheng's words brought Lin Mo back to reality from his contemplation. He looked up and saw seven connected three-story buildings, which stood out in an old dot-fashioned building. Now the car was parked in the middle of the building. In front of the door was a staircase made of white marble, and the spacious and bright door looked particularly imposing. A large plaque on the door read the words, Lin's business. This was the headquarters of the Lin family in Nanjing, specifically responsible for affairs in Nanjing and surrounding areas. On both sides of the headquarters were the Lin family's ready-to-wear shops and department stores, while the other houses were used for rent. All right, Lao Huang, let's get off here, but I didn't bring any change today. You can come with me to collect the money for the car. As they spoke, everyone got off the car and walked towards the commercial store. Huang Haisheng quickly told the other yellow charter drivers to catch up with Lin Mo and others. 
As soon as a few people arrived at the door, a chubby middle-aged man greeted Lin Mo and said, Young master, you're here. Manager Lu is in the office upstairs, do you need me to take you up? Lin Mo waved his hand and pointed to Huang Haisheng, saying, Uncle Huang, no need. I'll just go up by myself. You can help me pay him for the car. Lin Mo finished speaking and walked towards the staircase. Uncle Huang's original name was Huang Xingming, who was specifically responsible for welcoming guests in the lobby of Nanjing Lin's trading company, equivalent to the lobby manager of future hotels. After Lin Mo went to Nanjing to attend the military academy, he would always come to Lin's trading company whenever he had time. Firstly, he came to visit Uncle Lu, and secondly, to reassure his family. He became familiar with the people in the trading company and was greeted by people all the way. Lin Mo responded while taking Yang Haicheng and the three of them to the third floor. Lin Mo and others arrived on the third floor. Lin Mo knocked on the door with the sign of the general manager's office and walked in with a few people. Sitting on the office chair, Lu Xiaoguang heard a knock on the door and shifted his gaze away from the documents on his desk. He looked towards the door and saw Lin Mo and the others walking in. Lu Xiaoguang then put down his pen and met them. Young master, you have come over. You have nothing to do at the military academy, right? Uncle Lu asked Lin Mo with a smile, then turned to look at the three people behind Lin Mo and said, Hai Cheng, Chang Wu, don't stand still in ordinary years, sit down. Thank Uncle Lu. After nodding and thanking Uncle Lu, the three of them were classmates and roommates with Lin Mo. They have accompanied Lin Mo many times, but they are not silent here. After several people sat down, Uncle Lu said to Lin Mo again, Young master, why didn't Mu Ren and Yi Xian come with you? Mu Ren was called Waliji Mu Ren, a student from Xinjiang. In the ninth issue, Waliji Mu Ren was recruited for the first time from Xinjiang, Zizeng, and other regions. Yi Xian was originally named Lu Yi Xian, a student from Sichuan. He said that they were from the Lu family in Sichuan, and they were also Lin Mo's roommates. At ordinary times, six people worked together, but today they didn't come out with Lin Mo and others when they had something to do. Uncle Lu, they have a personal matter and won't be with us today. Before Lin Mo could explain, Yang Haicheng shouted at Uncle Lu. Uncle Lu glared at him with hatred, I didn't ask you what your name is. Hearing Uncle Lu's tone, Yang Haicheng's neck shrank and he instantly lost his temper. Uncle Lu grew up in a temple from a young age. When he was 13 or 14 years old, his master passed away. The temple only had Uncle Lu and his master. When his master passed away, he entrusted someone to find Lin Mo's grandfather to help him return to secular life. He helped Lin Mo's grandfather out of danger multiple times. Later, the Lin family's business expanded, and Lin Mo's grandfather did not want Uncle Lu to take any more risks. He asked him to follow Lin Mo's father and uncle to protect and teach them martial arts. Later, after Lin Mo's father and others stabilized, Uncle Lu came to Nanjing to take care of the Lin family's industry for a period of time, and then returned to Hangzhou to urge Lin Mo and others to practice martial arts. Yang Haicheng was very mischievous when he was young and often caused trouble. His parents and Lin Mo's family are neighbors. When he saw Uncle Lu picking up Lin Mo and the others, he asked Uncle Lu to teach Yang Haicheng together. Every time he caused trouble, Uncle Lu would pick him up. Now that he has grown up, he still has a great shadow over Uncle Lu. As soon as he heard Uncle Lu's tone not good, he immediately smiled. Uncle Lu has been in the Lin family for over 50 years and has become a member of the Lin family. For many Lin family members, Uncle Lu is already a part of the Lin family, and the younger generation of the Lin family respects Uncle Lu very much. Lin Mo looked at Lu Xu's white hair and wrinkles on his face, with an inexplicable emotion courageously moving towards his heart. At this moment, Lin Mo understood that he not only inherited this body, but also inherited the responsibilities that this body must bear. In this world, he was responsible for the entire family behind this body. 
Lin Mo secretly made up his mind that since he could not show filial piety to his parents in his past life, he would do his best to protect his loved ones in this world and never let his parents, Lu Xu, and other relatives suffer any harm. Suddenly, Lin Mo's various negative emotions in his mind have been swept away these days, his brain is clear, his thinking is more agile, and he feels even more fluid in his grip on his body. The discomfort he has experienced over the past few days has also disappeared. At this moment, Lin Mo realized that his discomfort these days was not due to unfamiliarity with this body, but rather the persistence left by its owner against him. If he did not accept everything about this identity, he would never be able to become the owner of this body. However, as the discomfort disappeared, a strange feeling appeared in Lin Mo's mind again. Lin Mo always felt that the inherited memory seemed a bit strange, but he didn't know where the strangeness was. Lin Mo shook his head, not wanting to delve deeper. Lin Mo thinks that it may be the same as today, and it will naturally pass without any impact in the future. However, what Lin Mo did not expect was that today's incident would completely change Lin Mo's life trajectory in the future. After chatting with Uncle Lu for a while, Lin Mo and his companions got up and said goodbye. Lin Mo only came to visit Uncle Lu and didn't have anything to do, so he didn't disturb Uncle Lu's office anymore. On the first floor, Lin Mo approached Huang Xingming and said, Uncle Huang, we plan to buy a casual outfit. Take us to the ready-to-wear shop to take a look, I'm not familiar with it. Okay, I'll take you there. Just a few days ago, a new batch of goods was sent from Shanghai, and there are many styles that are perfect for you. As they spoke, they walked towards the door with a few people. As they were about to reach the door, a middle-aged man walked towards them and politely asked Huang Xingming, Good morning, Manager Huang. Have you received the goods I wanted? Lin Mo fixed his gaze on the middle-aged man and looked for a man in his forties at Xuyuan www.xiaoshuyuan.com. His hair was neatly combed, he was wearing a pair of golden glasses and a suit tie, giving a sense of literary elegance. However, his tone had a hint of northeastern dialect, giving Lin Mo a strange feeling. When did northeasterners become so polite? It must be because the times were different, Lin Mo did not ponder deeply. It's Mr. Chen, the goods are ready, but I'm really sorry. I need to accompany a few more customers. I'll have Xiao Zhang take you over to pick up the goods. Huang Xingming said and summoned a nearby assistant to take Mr. Chen to pick up the goods. Thank you, Manager Huang. I won't disturb Manager Huang anymore, said Huang Xingming and a few others before going to pick up the goods with the assistant. Lin Mo and Huang Xingming walked towards the ready-to-wear shop together, and Yang Haicheng suddenly interjected, what kind of person was that guy just now? He looked like a dog. Huang Xingming turned around and glared at him with hatred and taught him a lesson, don't always speak ill of others behind their backs. That person's name was Chen Maofeng, and he was the owner of Qing Mao Trading Company. He is a big business in Nanjing that can rank high. That's not as big as Lin's trading company, and the Lin family can also rank high in the country. Yang Haicheng continued. Huang Xing understood Yang Haicheng's glance and said, Is that comparable? The Lin family has been doing business with foreigners for decades, and their Qing Mao business has only been in operation for less than five or six years. When the group arrived at the ready to wear shop, Huang Xingming saw that Yang Haicheng was still planning to argue with him so he said directly, all right, stop talking about him, go in and choose clothes. Upon hearing this, Yang Haicheng quickly walked to the ready-to-wear shop, forgetting all about what had happened earlier. However, Lin Mo always felt that Chen Maofeng was strange, but he didn't think much about it, so he followed the others. Entered the ready-to-wear shop. Chapter 4 Leather Shop You are listening at NovelFull.audio when Lin Mo walked into the ready-to-wear shop, Huang Xingming had already explained to the shopkeeper that there were already many people in the shop. The shopkeeper greeted the five people and gave Huang Xingming the warehouse key to take everyone to pick. Huang Xingming and the four of them walked towards the third-floor warehouse. 
When they reached the third floor, they opened the warehouse door and let the four of them in to choose. As soon as Lin Mo entered the warehouse, he was startled by the various clothes in front of him. It was also his first time entering the warehouse of a ready-to-wear shop, and he never imagined that there were so many styles of clothes in this era. The clothes in the warehouse of the ready-to-wear shop are not stored in cabinets, but are all hung on hangers, which is just more crowded compared to the store. Seeing all kinds of clothes, several people were overjoyed and quickly picked them up. Yang Haicheng and the others knew that Lin Mo's family was wealthy and did not lack the money for this set of clothes, so they calmly picked them up. Lin Mo also picked it up, but there were not many clothing styles suitable for them. Lin Mo first chose a black and gray top hat, then a white shirt, and a vest of the same color as the top hat. He then went to the fitting room to change his military uniform, and walked out to look at the others. He saw that Yang Haicheng and the three had not yet picked it out, so he walked towards them. It's not just a little girl. It's been so long and I haven't picked one yet. Li Changgu and Zhao Pingyin saw Lin Mo walking out, and their eyes lit up. They felt that Lin Mo had chosen a very good outfit, giving a sense of bravery. The two also chose a suit based on Lin Mo's attire. Li Changgu chose a black one, while Zhao Pingyin chose a gray one. However, Yang Haicheng only glanced at the three of them and continued to choose his own. Lin Mo asked and didn't take care of the three anymore. He left the warehouse wearing military uniforms and waited for the three outside the door. After a while, Li Changgu and Zhao Pingyin walked out, and it must be said that this outfit is quite suitable for a few people. Wearing it makes people look more energetic. Three of you, let's see how my outfit looks. Upon hearing this, the three of them looked at Yang Haicheng. Yang Haicheng showed off a coquettish demeanor to the three of them, wearing a white suit, a white horse jacket, a white shirt, and a white hat, which left them stunned. What are you doing? You're making yourself look like a promiscuous person, Lin Mo asked in confusion. Yang Haicheng gave Lin Mo a white eye and said sternly, this is called a promiscuous and reckless young man. Do you understand? I was thinking about graduating soon. I won't be doing this kind of good thing in the military anymore. If I don't go crazy, I won't have a chance again. Do you want to change your outfit? Lin Mo opened his mouth and couldn't say anything. He waved his hand at Yang Haicheng and led a few people downstairs. He greeted Huang Xingming and asked him to find someone to send the military uniform to Old Zheng. He then walked outside the door. Along the way, Yang Haicheng caught his eye and looked at those eerie gazes. Lin Mo and the three of them consciously kept their distance. Upon arriving outside the door, Yang Haicheng was heard to say to Lin Mo, Brother Lin, you see my belt is almost broken. Let's find a place to replace it. Upon hearing this, Lin Mo looked at Yang Haicheng's belt, which was indeed very old, especially under his white body, it looked even more prominent. He also glanced at the three of himself, and it was time to replace it with a new one. Okay, there's a leather goods store over there. Let's go over and have the boss exchange it for us. Lin Mo pointed to the three-story building at the edge and walked towards the leather goods store with a few people. Four people walked into the leather goods shop, but there was no one inside. There was only a counter, which was cluttered with a pile of leather scraps and scraps. Behind the counter was a tall container with various types of leather materials on it. The owner of this shop is Herbert Henry, a German man around 40 years old who is very familiar with Lin Mo. Henry sold things here before Lin Mo. However, the leather goods business was not good, and he could only make a living by reselling some small things. When he went to Lin's trading house to pay rent, he heard that Lin Mo. Through his connections, he bought various books that were not available in China and sold them to Lin Mo. He established a relationship with Lin Mo. He made a lot of money, but Henry did bring Lin Mo economics, technology, biology, chemistry, and even some military school textbooks and lecture notes. There are many of them, and Lin Mo even bought a yard specifically to store these books. 
The yard is located behind Mr. Zhang's house, and a door is specially opened on the wall of his yard. He usually asks Mr. Zheng to help take care of them. Every time he takes a break, Lin Mo will bring some books to the military academy to read. Although the books are written in German or English, thanks to the fact that the Lin family is engaged in foreign trade, Lin Mo has learned German and English since childhood, and reading is not a problem. Lin Mo asked the three of them to sit down in front of the cabinet and shouted into the room, Herbert, 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 there's a guest coming, come out quickly. Because the books Herbert sold to Lin Mo were so expensive and had red hair, Lin Mo later decided to call Herbert Herbert Herbert. When Lin Mo first called, Herbert was so angry that he jumped every time. However, more times, Herbert became less angry because every time Lin Mo called like this, it meant he could make a big profit. Herbert, who was talking to someone in the backyard, heard Lin Mo's voice and said to the person in front of him, Scott, I'm very sorry. My big spender is here, and I need to go and greet him first. Scott glanced at the door and said to Herbert, I also want to see your big spender, I don't know if it's convenient. Herbert stared at the man in front of him and said, Okay, but you're not taking my business. It wasn't until the man in front of him nodded and agreed that Herbert took him out. Dear Lin, you finally came over. I thought you had forgotten about me, Herbert said to Lin Mo as soon as he arrived at the door. He enthusiastically walked towards Lin Mo and reached out his hand to hold him. Lin Mo quickly pushed him away and said, I just came here today to buy some leather straps from you, not to talk business. Herbert was taken aback by the words and quickly said to Lin Mo, Dear Lin, don't be like this. I have big business to talk to you about. There are plenty of belts here, so you can choose one yourself. I have big business to talk to you about this time. Big business. What big business? I don't seem to have talked to you about any big business, Lin Mo asked in confusion. Lin, don't you forget. Last time I brought you that batch of technical information, you said you needed as much as you wanted. Herbert quickly reminded Lin Mo when he heard that Lin Mo had forgotten. Upon hearing this, Lin Mo immediately put on an angry expression and said to Herbert angrily, He Hong Mao, how dare you bring up this matter? What was the thing you sold me last time, and also the technical information? Did you pick up garbage from some bankrupt small light bulb factory? You can tell me that it's technical information. Previously, Lin Mo and Herbert bought some European technology introduction books, which sparked a strong interest in those technologies. They always asked Herbert to help buy some technical materials, but they never bought them. It wasn't until six months ago that they bought Lin Mo several large boxes of technical materials for electric lights. Lin Mo was overjoyed and told him how much he needed. However, when he went back to look at the book garden www.zhaoshuyuan.com, he found out that it was information about a small light bulb factory, which infuriated Lin Mo. However, Lin Mo carefully checked it and found that there were also some production materials for electric materials in these materials. Overall, Lin Mo was not at a loss, but now Lin Mo will not let this go for nothing. If the guy tries to trick him again, no matter what, he will still try to trick Herbert. Lin Mo thought for a moment, no, Herbert said it's a big business. He probably brought himself a lot of information, right? Lin Mo knew that he wasn't always as lucky as last time, so he had to suffer a loss. He quickly asked, Herbert, didn't you get a bunch of the same information as last time? Seeing Lin Mo staring at him, Herbert quickly explained, Lin, listen to me explain. The information I bought last time was from a wealthy young man I met in the UK. He was someone who relied on his father's influence to wander around. When he heard that I wanted as much as I wanted, he bought a lot in Europe and the United States. Lin Mo listened to Herbert's voice becoming quieter as he spoke. He quickly interrupted Herbert and asked, just tell me how much he actually bought. He telegraphed me yesterday saying that he had rented two cargo ships with a displacement of over 30,000 tons in Europe and nearly 40,000 tons in the United States to transport goods. 
Herbert carefully said to Lin Mo. Lin Mo was taken aback by the words and said, the total cargo must be over 50,000 tons. How could he find so much technical information? Herbert quickly explained, there isn't that much, only over 200 tons of information. The rest are machines left behind by bankrupt companies, but he hopes we all buy them. With this, Herbert looked carefully at Lin Mo. As soon as Lin Mo saw Herbert's gaze, he knew there must be some hidden truth behind it. He said, let's talk later, it's not convenient to talk here. After that, he followed Herbert to the backyard with Yang Haicheng and the three of them. Chapter 5 Troubles You are listening at NovelFull.audio As he walked, Lin Mo finally noticed the middle-aged foreigner next to Herbert, with a tall nose, blonde hair, and a gray suit, giving off a sense of introverted depth. Lin Mo believed that this guy was definitely not an ordinary person. In the backyard, several people sat down one by one. Just as Herbert was about to explain, Lin Mo asked first, Herbert, I wonder if this is your friend. Why didn't you recommend me? Herbert knew that Lin Mo did not trust his friend, so he quickly explained, This is T.J. Scott, a German-American who was my childhood neighbor. Later, he immigrated to the United States with his parents. A few years ago, we met in Shanghai, but now there are many people doing foreign trade in Shanghai, so he came to Nanjing for development. Scott is very trustworthy. Hello Mr. Lin, I often hear Herbert mention you, and I am very happy to meet you. Upon hearing Herbert introduce himself, Scott immediately greeted Lin Mo and extended his hand to him. Seeing Scott's extended hand, Lin Ma also extended his hand and shook Scott's, introduced the three young Haiching people to them, asked them to drink tea and eat dim sum themselves, and began to talk with Herbert and Scott. Lin Mo asked Herbert, that's a lot of information with over 200 tons. Even waste paper is a considerable amount of money. How could he have so many things? Herbert realized that Lin Mo had not yet refused to purchase these things, so he quickly explained, that nobleman heard that someone here was taking these things, so he joined forces with a group of people from their circle to acquire a large number of bankrupt small businesses at a low price. He planned to package and sell the technical materials inside to me to make a profit. Lin, if you have money, you must help me buy them. Although their circle is all a group of playboys, their parents are high-ranking officials from various countries. If you don't buy them, I and your Lin family may have trouble. After listening to this, Lin Mo pondered for a while and thought that the Lin family is engaged in import business. If he really offended a group of such people, and really said that no one would affect the Lin family's business, he said to Herbert, if the price is reasonable, I can buy it, but do you know what information there is? If you buy it, will we have trouble? You used to never be able to buy information before. But what about those machines? Listening to Lin Mo's series of questions, Herbert was also full of bitterness. He never expected that the wealthy young master would be so unreliable, nor did he know if Lin Mo could eat so much food. However, he quickly answered Lin Mo's question. There is no trouble, those documents are all from some small and medium dot sized bankrupt enterprises, and they are not worth money in our place. In the past, I couldn't find people who have these things. In recent years, there are bankrupt enterprises everywhere in our area. As long as we pay and find the right person, we can basically buy some, but ordinary people dare not openly buy and sell them. The wealthy young master himself is not clear about what information is, and it is all entrusted by him. I will go down and handle it. A few days ago, I sent a telegram and he said that most of them are shipyards, steel mills, cement factories, machine tool factories, processing plants, smelters, tractor factories, and so on. Anyway, all kinds of factories have them. As for the machines, they bought bankrupt factories and thought that since you bought materials, you would definitely buy machines, so they decided to ship them over as well after hearing Herbert's answer, Lin Mo also felt a headache and was speechless about the second generation of officials. However, he still asked directly, 
just tell me how much they want. Upon hearing Lin Mo's question, Herbert quickly replied, they are asking for five million dollars, but I think the price can still be lowered. Moreover, they have hired a group of skilled workers in those bankrupt factories. The nobleman said that as long as you are willing to buy all the goods from the cargo ship, he will send those skilled workers over, but you will have to pay the salary yourself. After listening to Herbert's words, I had the heart to beat him to death. However, I patiently asked, I just want to know what the cost of those things is, and the price of five million dollars is already equivalent to all of our Lin family's assets. I cannot spend so much money, nor do I have so much money. Lin M.O. would not say to Herbert that this is only the funds that the Lin family can turn over, and other fixed assets such as shops and antiques are not included. Of course, this money is also all the funds that the Lin family can turn over. Herbert was also stunned when he heard that the Lin family was so wealthy. He thought that Lin M.O. could only buy those materials at most, so he quickly replied, those bankrupt enterprises are not worth money at most only about one million dollars. They will buy them even cheaper, and it won't cost much money. Upon hearing Herbert's words, Lin M.O. was also quite surprised. He thought that the cost of those machines would be two or three million U.S. dollars, but on second thought, it was also true that those wealthy young masters were not fools. If the cost was really high, selling materials alone would not be enough to make a profit. In their eyes, those machines were just an addition. However, Lin M.O. wouldn't push the price too low because of this. After all, a group of people willing to sell these things are not easy to find. Maybe they can buy more good things from them in the future, and those skilled workers are also very precious. If they make a mistake, it will be difficult to find them in the future. With this in mind, Lin M.O. said to Herbert, I can only offer a maximum of two million dollars. Can you help me negotiate the price with him? As long as we can negotiate the price, I won't reduce your commission. However, the price can't be too low. The minimum is 1.5 million dollars. Maybe there will be opportunities for cooperation between me and them in the future. Do you think we can achieve it? Upon hearing Lin Mo's inquiry, Herbert fell into contemplation. He had never been in contact with such a large business before and had no confidence in negotiating the price. At this moment, Scott, who had been silent beside him, said to Lin M.O., the price Mr. Lin offered is already very high. Those bankrupt factories in the West are not worth money. The other party is clearly bullying you, not understanding the market and making random quotations. I believe the price Mr. Lin offered cannot be refused by the other party. Upon hearing Scott's words, Herbert also looked up and asked, Is it true? Scott nodded at Herbert's characteristic. Upon hearing their conversation, Lin M.O. became even more puzzled about Scott's identity and said to him, Thank you very much, Mr. Scott. Otherwise, the two of us would be stuck in a grudge. I don't know what Mr. Scott does in business, the news is so clever. Upon hearing Lin M.O.'s question, before Scott could answer, Herbert snatched up the answer and said, Lin, last time you asked me if I wanted to buy some good guns. Scott has a lot of good American goods there. Would you like to take a look? Upon hearing Herbert's answer, Scott smiled at Lin M.O. and said, I've recently received a batch of new guns over there. I wonder if Mr. Lin is interested in taking a look. Upon hearing their answers, Lin M.O. immediately understood that this guy was an arms dealer, and possibly an intelligence dealer. As a descendant, Lin M.O. had a clear understanding of these matters. It should be noted that in this era, foreigners who could do big business in China were mostly either related to foreign intelligence agencies or employees of large foreign companies, especially arms dealers and black market merchants. They were basically members of those intelligence agencies. However, Lin M.O. did not say anything, anyway, what they should collect in a few years is Japanese information. Okay, anyway, we're just going out to hang out today. We'll come over and take a look at your place later, Lin M.O. said to Scott. The current government of the Republic of China does not strictly manage handguns. In the military, 
officers can wear handguns as long as they go to the logistics gun management office to register the gun model and other data. Lin M.O. plans to buy some to give to his classmates. Lin M.O. thought for a moment and then asked the three of Yang Haicheng, there are some good American guns over at Coaster. Should we go over and take a look together later? The three nodded and Li Changwu continued to Lin M.O., sure, we are all about to graduate. It is necessary to buy some good guns with us. Lin M.O. knew what Li Changwu meant, and buying a gun can be used for self.defense. After all, this era is still very chaotic, and in the future, it can also be used as a gift in the military. After all, there is no soldier who doesn't like guns. Lin M.O. chatted with the three of them a few more words before returning to Herbert's side and continuing to talk about the three shipments of goods. Some people may have doubts about the fact that the Lin family has 5 million US dollars in assets, but this amount is actually not very large. At Lin Mo's time, 1 US dollar could be exchanged for about 3 ocean dollars, and 5 million US dollars is only 15 million ocean dollars. The ocean contains about 27 grams of silver, the Republic of China government allowed the ocean to be freely minted and circulated. Spain's mainland, Mexico's Eagle Ocean, French Indochinese Sitting Ocean, Japan's Dragon Ocean, British Station Ocean, Austro-Hungarian Empires, Big Nanny, Various Dragon Oceans, Qing Dynasty, Republic of China, Big Head, Small Head, Boat Ocean, Chinese Version, etc., and even the Dutch 2.5 Shield, France slash Belgium's 5 Francs, etc., which means that everything that meets this requirement. The specifications can all be considered as ocean, while one or two silver coins are about 59.5 grams, equivalent to 2.2 ocean coins, and 15 million ocean coins are only equivalent to over 6.8 million tails of silver. This is not considered excessive silver. Since the Ming Dynasty, a large amount of silver has been imported into China by Europeans from the Americas, causing a significant depreciation of silver in China. At the end of the Qing dynasty, European countries also exchanged a large amount of silver for Qing dynasty currency, hoarded copper materials, and a large influx of silver led to a significant depreciation of silver prices again. In the late Ming dynasty, some coastal smugglers owned millions of tales of wealth. Looking for Xuyuan www.jiaoshuyuan.com Another intuitive example is that Hakuan embezzled wealth worth 800 million to 1.1 billion tails of silver. Even when Hakuan's butler was stolen from his family, he was greedy for wealth worth 100 million tails of silver. Therefore, around 7 million tails of wealth was not much among the big families of that era, after all, it was accumulated by a big family for countless generations. Now that the United States is about to raise silver prices, making the Lin family's silver even more valuable. Thinking of this, Lin M.O. remembered the silver acquisition bill he read about the United States in his previous life when he was in college. It seems that the silver price rose in June of this year, and maybe he still has it. The opportunity was great, and Lin M.O. quickly thought of it in his heart. However, there was still a long time left, and Lin M.O. was not in a hurry. The two of them carefully sorted out the details several times and thought there was no problem. Lin M.O. then said to Herbert, we don't have that much cash at home. It may take a few months to turn it around, will there be any problems? Faced with Lin M.O.'s inquiry, Herbert thought for a moment and replied, I don't think there's a problem. It will take some time for the ship to arrive, so we need to pay a deposit first when the ship arrives. Everything else should be postponed for a while. Okay, that's it for now. If we have any questions, we can discuss them later. Lin M.O. finished speaking and turned to Scott, asking, Mr. Scott, I don't know where we're going to trade. Is it convenient to go now? After listening, Scott quickly said to Lin M.O., Lin, you don't need to call me sir, just call me by my name. My store is on Zhongshan Road, and I'll take you there in a moment. Lin M.O. nodded and thought to himself, anyway, we don't have any conflicts of interest. If we maintain a good relationship, we may still have a cooperative relationship in the future. After all, 
there are multiple relationships and paths. Scott naturally didn't know what Lin M.O. was thinking. Seeing Lin M.O. nod, he stood up and beckoned a few people to go to his shop together. Chapter 6 Arms Trading You are listening at Novel Full Audio. The group arrived at Scott's shop in a yellow chartered car. Lin M.O. looked up and saw that it was written as a western restaurant. Lin M.O. thought to himself, this Scott is really impressive. I don't think anyone would actually trade weapons in the western restaurant. A few people followed Scott towards the western restaurant, and when they arrived, there were already several tables of people eating, all young men and women. Scott explained a few words to the clerk and then led everyone to the backyard. This courtyard is not big, with houses built on both sides, which looks like a warehouse. Scott led everyone towards the warehouse on the left and opened the warehouse door for everyone to enter. The warehouse was not big, only some miscellaneous items were stored inside, and he didn't see where the gun was. Everyone was still puzzled, but Scott came to the innermost wall of the warehouse, took off a wooden board from the wall, and took out a key from his body to insert it. He twisted it a bit, and a sound came from the sound of brush. The wall was pulled aside, and a new warehouse appeared in front of everyone. The warehouse is very large, covering nearly 50 square meters. It seems that Scott bought the neighboring house and built this new warehouse between two courtyards. The new warehouse is very tidy, with only a few piles of boxes and nothing else. It can be seen that it has just been prepared and there is not much inventory. Scott turned around and said to the others, Everyone, come in and take a look. I have a lot of good guns here, and these are all newly arrived goods. You are my first batch of customers, so I can give you a discount. Lin M.O. and the others followed Scott into the warehouse and arrived next to the pile of goods with the most boxes. Scott introduced them, here are handguns and pistol bullets, all new guns. Let's see what kind of guns you like, these are sample guns. After speaking, he opened a small box, which contained various types of handguns. Lin M.O. also looked into the box, which contained many pistols that he didn't recognize. However, he still saw the famous Browning Colt M1911A1 pistol, which used 0.45 ACP, automatic Colt pistol, bullets as ammunition, with a caliber of 11.43 mm, making it a large and heavy bullet in later generations. Due to the large size of the bullet, its initial velocity is not very high, only 246m slash second, but it has extremely high human inhibitory force. The design focus of the bullet is not to pursue penetration and long dot range shooting ability, but to prevent enemies from attacking and achieve a deterrent effect in addition, Lin M.O. also saw the Browning 1910 pistol, using 7.65mm ACP pistol ammunition, known as the Hua Ko Pao Z, in China, the Browning FN 1900 pistol, using 7.65mm pistol ammunition, known as the Gun Label Pao Z, in China, and the Browning Colt 1903 pistol, using 7.65mm pistol ammunition, known as the Horse Label Pao Z, in China. These guns were truly high.end goods in China at this time. It was unexpected that Scott brought so many good goods, which made Lin M.O. look up at his identity again. I glanced at the other pistols a few more times, but unfortunately I didn't recognize them, but it shouldn't be Browning. So I turned to Scott and asked, Scott, are there many guns and bullets like M1911A1, M1900, M1903, and M1910? Scott looked at Lin M.O. in surprise. It should be noted that not many people in China at this time knew the names of these guns. They were all called horse cards, gun cards, and flower cards, let alone M1911A1, which is rare in China. However, Scott still replied, M1911A1 is relatively few, only 50, but there are many bullets. There are many other three types of guns, and I don't know how many you want, Lin. Upon hearing Scott's answer, Lin M.O. thought for a moment. During World War II, the U.S. military had almost every M1911A1, and it served in the military until the 1990s. 
Its reliability was self-evident, and its power was strong enough to be suitable for graduates like them. After all, although they graduated as officers, they were only low-level officers and still had to charge in the front line. As for the other three types of handguns, you can buy some and keep them for later gift-giving. With this in mind, he said to Scott, I'll take all 50 M1911A1, and as for the other three, we'll need 20 of each, with 2,000 bullets per one. Sko nodded, and Lin M.O. looked at the three people in Lin Haicheng. Seeing them holding pistols, he looked into the small box to see if there were any other good guns. Looking at it, I noticed a small pistol in the corner being pressed down by other pistols, so I reached out and picked it up. The small pistol was very compact, only about 10 centimeters long. Looking at the muzzle, the caliber was very small. After careful consideration, Lin Mozai suddenly realized a big mistake. Isn't this the M1906, a pocket-sized pistol that still uses 0.25-inch ACP pistol cartridges? It is a very famous spy pistol in this era. Lin M.O. tried again on his hand, only the size of a palm, which felt very suitable for women to use. It could be used for self.defense for women at home. You should know that society is very chaotic now, and having a gun for self.defense is also necessary. He said to Scott, Scott, give me 20 M1906 as well, and the bullets will be the same as before. Upon hearing Lin Mo's words, Scott looked into Lin Mo's hand and thought for a moment, Lin, I only have 10 of these pistols and only have 2,000 bullets. But Lin, can I know what you bought this gun for? You know, this pistol is called a spy pistol in our area, and ordinary people wouldn't buy it. Scott looked at Lin M.O. with a strange look as he spoke. Seeing Scott's gaze, Lin M.O. knew he had misunderstood him and explained to him, I saw this small gun, bought for family self.defense. You know China is not peaceful, I want these guns and bullets. Upon hearing Lin Mo's explanation, Scott suddenly said happily to Lin Mo, Lin, you are really my lucky star. How could I not have thought of selling these guns to my family for self.defense? This is really a good idea. Lin, I have decided to give you these small guns and bullets as a reward for this good idea. Lin M.O. nodded and expressed gratitude, but did not refuse, because Lin M.O. knew that there are people in the West who pay for good ideas. However, Scott did not expect that his speculation that Lin M.O. was a spy today would come true soon. Lin M.O. also did not expect that Scott's words would become a prophecy, and he would embark on a path he had never thought of by chance, becoming a brilliant stroke in Lin Mo's life. At this moment, the two were still exchanging affectionately. While the two were still talking, Yang Haicheng and the three of them had also chosen their own guns. The three of them, M1900, M1903, and M1910, each had chosen a few. Yang Haicheng then said to Lin Mo, We have all chosen them. How should we bring them back? Should we bring them with us? Upon hearing Yang Haicheng's inquiry, Lin Mo thought for a moment and waved his hand to Yang Haicheng, saying, No need, it's not convenient to carry so many guns with you. After selecting them later, let Scott send them to Uncle Lu's place for storage. After a while, it will be convenient to take them back to the military academy. Upon hearing my words, Scott said to us, Yang, Lin is right. Although you are students of the military academy, you should only bring one back. It's not appropriate to bring back the other guns as you need to find a place to keep them. Lin M.O. nodded when he heard it. With so many guns and bullets, it's really inconvenient to bring them back to the military academy like an arsenal. Lin M.O. remembered that there were still two piles of boxes in the warehouse, so he pointed to the larger pile of boxes and asked Scott, Scott, I don't know what gun is inside. Scott followed Lin Mo's hand and said to him, Oh, you're talking about this. These are all long guns, so they shouldn't be of much use to you. By the way, there are also some submachine guns inside. Scott opened a few boxes as he spoke. Lin Mo and his companions looked into the box and saw brand new rifles neatly placed inside. Lin Mo reached out and picked up one and looked at it. 
It turned out to be the Springfield rifle, which sounds like a Japanese weapon, but is actually a pure American gun. However, the gun was developed and produced by the Springfield Arsenal in 1903, and was named the M1903 Springfield Rifle, also known as the Springfield Rifle. It was in service on June 19, 1903. The 7.62mm caliber, rotating and pull dot out rifle was modeled after the German 98 series Mauser rifle. With the M73 or M73B1 2.2x sight, the shooting accuracy was improved. This gun is widely trusted and has always been considered the preferred sniper rifle due to its excellent performance. Lin M.O. recalled the information from his past life and realized that there were also several sharpshooters in his class who could be sold to them. With this in mind, he asked Scott, Scott, do you have Springfield sniper rifles here? What I'm talking about is specifically selecting sniper rifles with sights installed, not ordinary rifles with sights installed. Lin M.O. was right. Sniper rifles are usually selected from a pile of rifles with ultra-high precision, and not every gun can have a sight added. Upon hearing Lin Mo's words, Scott felt a bit depressed. He never expected Lin Mo to be so knowledgeable. You know, when he was in Shanghai, he could easily scare people who bought guns by boasting. However, Scott didn't think much, just thought that Nanjing was indeed a place where tigers hide dragons. With this in mind, he said to Lin M.O., Lin, you are really discerning. I have never sold this thing in China before, but this time a friend specifically asked me to bring some new products to try the water. There happen to be ten, but I can only give you five. I have other uses for the other guns, but there are many sites, including 2.2 times, 4 times, and 8 times. I don't know how much Lin you want. Lin Nemo thought for a moment and said, Okay, I'll take all five of them. I'll need sight lenses of every multiple, and two sets for each gun. It's not easy to find these things in China. China is not the manufacturing powerhouse of later generations, and various materials are very scarce now, let alone sight lenses. Therefore, when Lin Nemo buys something that is relatively scarce in China, he will pay extra attention and try to buy as many things as possible for backup. With this in mind, Lin M.O. said to Scott again, Scott, I also want to order a batch of sights. I wonder if you have this channel. Scott looked at Lin M.O. in confusion. He couldn't understand what Lin M.O. was thinking, but he thought for a moment and replied, Sure, my friend should have channels, but how much do you want? If there is more, my friend won't be able to get it for a while. He still needs to place an order with the manufacturer, and it will take some time for it to arrive. I don't know if you can wait. Lin Mo waved his hand at Scott and said, It's okay, I'm not in a hurry. Can you help me order a thousand 2.2x lenses, 504x and 8x lenses? Scott nodded and agreed, but was very surprised. Scott really didn't understand the purpose of Lin M.O. buying so many things. Upon hearing Lin Mo's words, Yang Haicheng and his companions were also filled with doubts. Yang Haicheng opened his mouth and swallowed the words, as this was not the place to ask questions. Despite his usual carelessness, he sometimes did some surprising things. He went to Shuyuan www.jiaoshuyuan.com, but he was not foolish. He knew when something could be done and when it could not be done. Lin M.O. ignored the few people and looked at the box containing the submachine gun, which contained a brand new Thompson submachine gun, the Thompson submachine gun, also known as the Chicago typewriter, due to its clattering sound like a typewriter, also known as the Chicago typewriter, and the Chicago violin, also known as the killing donkey submachine gun. In the early days of China, it was called a handheld machine gun or submachine machine gun. The Thompson submachine gun was designed by O.V. Perth and T.H. Okoff of the United States in the late 1910s and was produced by Brigadier General John T. Thompson, director of the Small Arms Division of the U.S. Army Ordnance Department, and his own firearms company, Auto Ordnance, AOC. After the successful development of the M1919, the earliest production model was the M1921, 
which subsequently produced the M1923 and M1928 series submachine guns. The M1928A1 model was successfully developed in 1930 and was equipped in small quantities by the U.S. military. It was also used by Allied forces during World War II. During World War II, the production of Thompson submachine guns reached over 1.4 million units, and production officially ceased in 1945, inside the box was the M1928A1. Thinking about the amazing firing rate of this gun, Lynn Moe's heart was filled with excitement. He bought 10 magazines from Scott and saw that there were various types of magazines, 30, 50, and 100. After thinking about it, he asked Scott to prepare three sets of magazines for one gun, and five magazines for the other pistols. Seeing Scott's characteristics, he nodded and turned his gaze to the last pile of boxes. Since Scott mentioned that a friend had shipped things to him, Lin M.O. has developed a strong interest in this last pile of boxes. Chapter 7 Metal Detectors You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lin M.O. looked at the smallest pile of boxes and felt an unexpected surprise inside. He said to Scott, Scott, what's inside that box? Can't it be a heavy machine gun? Lin M.O. said to Scott in a joking tone. Upon hearing this, Scott quickly looked away and explained, how could that be? Lin, you should know that heavy weapons are not something that people like me can touch. It would be great if I could sell some long spears. There is the engineering equipment that my good friend entrusted me to bring over. Let's see if your government is interested in it. Unfortunately, it's obvious that your government is not interested in this thing at all. Oh, I don't know what kind of engineering equipment it is, but it must be some kind of high dot tech, Lin Mo asked with great interest. Scott heard Lin Mo's interested tone and immediately became energized. You know, this thing was bought by him and his friends at a high price. He thought the nationalist government would be very interested in this high dot tech thing, but unexpectedly, it was in his hands. When he heard Lin Mo's interest, he quickly said to him, this thing is the most advanced landmine detector in the world. I don't know if Lin is interested. Upon hearing Scott's words, Lin M.O. felt a wave of disappointment in his heart. He thought it was some top-dot-level equipment. It turned out to be a metal detector, which would be a mess in later generations. I don't know how many people would explore treasures with a detector. What's the use of this thing, Lin M.O. thought to himself. Suddenly, Lin Mo's mind became sharp, exploring treasures. Thinking of his past life, Lin Mo had seen countless treasures of the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom in Nanjing. Although it seemed that no one had ever found them before, he still saw many reports of finding some treasures, as well as some legends of finding them. Not to mention other hidden things, there were only a few things that Lin Mo remembered. Thinking of this, Lin Mo's heart was filled with enthusiasm. However, Lin Mo immediately suppressed his emotions and showed a keen interest in landmine detectors. He asked Scott, I don't know which type of landmine detector this is. Upon hearing Lin Mo's inquiry, Scott immediately enthusiastically explained, this is the Fisher detector, a better detector than the Bell detector. Upon hearing Scott's explanation, Lin Mo knew that this was the prototype of various detectors in later times. Compared to Bell's metal detector, Fisher's metal detector is more excellent. Bell utilizes electromagnetic induction, which has a small detection distance, relatively weak signal, is very electricity consuming, and the machine is also bulky. Fisher's wireless detector surpasses him in any aspect. Modern portable metal detectors originated from Fisher's model and have been improved by many inventors, becoming lighter, more sensitive, and easier to use, becoming an indispensable and efficient tool in modern life. Upon hearing Scott's introduction, Lin M.O. recalled the history of this detector. Unfortunately, he couldn't recall how deep it could penetrate. However, if there were indeed a large amount of metal underground, based on the principle that this detector interferes with metal through radio, there was a high probability of being detected. After thinking for a moment, Lin M.O. said to Scott, Scott, this thing is quite good. 
let's send it to Uncle Lu's side with the gun later, and they will settle the money for you. Lin and Mo thought for a moment and asked tentatively, I heard that some of your Western military factories specialize in producing and collecting firearms. I don't know if you have this kind of gun in your hand, and if so, I also want to buy some. Upon hearing Lin Mo's inquiry, Scott became even more depressed. He couldn't figure out how Lin Mo even knew about this matter. In fact, Lin Mo Jen didn't know if it was there, but he just remembered the gun pictures collected online in later generations, various handguns with exquisite patterns, which made Lin Mo drool at that time. Since he had the opportunity to play with guns in his life, he naturally held the idea of hitting two shots with dates but without dates, to see if there was a chance to buy it. If Scott found out about Lin Mo's idea, he would probably be so angry that he would vomit blood. However, Scott didn't know Lin Mo's true thoughts, so he replied, Lin, how did you know? You should know that not many people in our country know about this thing, and there aren't many of these guns in your country either. Upon hearing Scott's question, Lin Mo smiled and asked in response, Do you think you have it? Would I say I was just asking randomly? For Lin Mo's rhetorical question, Scott didn't find it easy to answer. He actually brought some over this time to open up a situation in Nanjing, but Lin Mo is still his big customer. So he replied, Lin, I do have some of these guns, but the quantity is not large. I can only give you 4 M1911A1 and 2 M1903 guns, all of which are black and silver. I'll give you half of them in one color. However, Lin, these guns are very expensive, with a unit price of $500. I don't know what you think. Sure, thank you Scott. Actually, $500 is already quite expensive. You should know that the pistols Lin Mo bought earlier are on average only over 40 yuan each, which is only about 10 yuan in US dollars. These four guns can buy all the pistols just now. However, Lin Mo also knows that there are not many opportunities like this, and he likes it himself. He is not short of money, and he will be very sincere in giving gifts in the future. He is not at a loss. Lin Mo and the others finished discussing business, had a polite conversation with Scott, and after a while, stood up to say goodbye. Lin Mo and the four of them left the Western restaurant and began to stroll on Zhongshan Road. Not to mention, the city of Nanjing in this world really has a unique atmosphere, whether it is the architectural style that is different from later generations or the spiritual outlook of people in this era, it gives Lin Mo a feeling of being separated from the world. A few people were strolling around on Zhongshan Road. Unconsciously, it was already noon. They found a restaurant with good decoration and walked in. They asked the waiter for a private room on the second floor. As soon as they sat down, the waiter brought tea and said, Ladies and gentlemen, what do you want to eat? Lin Nemo had never been here before, so he looked at Yang Haicheng and the three of them shook their heads. Lin Nemo had no choice but to say to the waiter, We're also here for the first time. Let's serve a few signature dishes from your place today. After Lin Nemo finished speaking, he waved his hand to the waiter and the waiter also went out wisely. At this moment, Yang Haicheng couldn't help but ask Lin Nemo, Lin Gu, no matter how wealthy your family is, uncle wouldn't agree with you spending so much money on machines, and that Herbert is obviously a scammer. Li Changgu and Zhao Pingyan also looked at Lin Mo in surprise. Lin Mo knew that the three of them were for his own good, so he waved his hand at Lin Haicheng and gestured to him to listen to him, saying, You don't understand business matters. That money doesn't need to be paid by our family. When those machines arrive, our Lin family will pay a deposit, take them first, and then we can find someone to cooperate and ask others to pay us a sum of money. The factory will invest, and my family can use this money to pay the final payment Yang Haicheng listened to Lin Mo's words but didn't believe them. He asked in reverse, don't talk nonsense. He's not a fool, how could he let you deceive him? Upon hearing Yang Haicheng's words, Lin Mabai glanced at him and said, you only saw that machines cost more money. That batch of goods is not only machines, but also other things. 
Li Changwu's eyes lit up and he asked, Lin Mo, what technical information are you talking about? Zhao Pingyan also interjected, and those skilled workers. Yes, it's not difficult to buy some machines here in China. What's lacking is technology and skilled workers, and this time we're buying all the materials and equipment for the entire factory. As long as we handle them properly, we can start producing proficiently in no time. At this point, Lin Mo looked around cautiously and gestured for the three of them to come over. He whispered, some factories may not have produced their current products in the past, and there may be many materials that were previously produced. There may be other gains, and there won't be many people willing to sell these things. Of course, if there is an opportunity, you should seize it. Maybe you can buy other good things through them in the future. This business is a huge profit for our Lin family, so you don't have to worry. Yang Haicheng was also speechless towards Lin Mo, not knowing how his brain grew. He had been better than him since he was young, and he had never won in this area since he was young. He reluctantly asked, why do you buy so many sights and detectors? I don't think these things are useful. Li Changwu and his companions also looked at Lin Mo. Although they thought Lin Mo wouldn't do useless work, they still wanted to know what these things were for. Lin Mo did not answer directly, but asked, do you know how many bullets can kill one person on average during World War I? And how many bullets can a sniper kill one person? Faced with Lin Mo's question, the three of them distanced themselves. Lin Mo continued, during the last world war, an average of 10,000 bullets killed one person, and this did not eliminate casualties caused by shelling and other factors. The best sniper killed one person with one. Three bullets. Impossible, how could there be such a big difference? This is impossible, Yang Haicheng shouted. He knew there would be a big difference between the two, but he couldn't believe it would be so big. Keep your voice down, listen to me finish speaking. This is what I saw some Western scholars calculate based on the consumption of bullets and casualties. The calculation process is not a problem, and there won't be much difference. 1.3 rounds is the result of the best sniper, and the sniper's rifles are selected from countless rifles with the best accuracy. And do you think Western countries are fools who spend so much effort cultivating snipers? Li Changwu asked, isn't that similar to being a sharpshooter in the army? It doesn't seem that important, does it? Lin Mo continued to explain, it's a long way off. Snipers are sharpshooters, but sharpshooters are not. The truly modern snipers first appeared in World War I, Germany was the first country to apply snipers to practical combat. At that time, Germany organized a group of excellent hunters and forest rangers who had strong physique, good tolerance, and patience to wait for prey. After appropriate training, they caused significant casualties to the British, French, and Russian armies. Moreover, the most frightening aspect of snipers for the enemy was. It is not the actual number of casualties, but rather a powerful psychological shock to the enemy, causing them to constantly be in a state of fear and fear, thereby losing their fighting spirit and affecting their morale. You can think about it. When you are fighting against an enemy, a bullet flies from somewhere and kills your subordinates, and then the second or third person. Or your subordinates stick their heads out of a trench on the battlefield and get shot to death, and another person sticks their head out and gets killed again. You can think about it. What would happen to you in this situation upon hearing Lin Mo's description, the three of them thought for a moment that if they and their subordinates were to encounter such a situation on the battlefield, they would all break out in a cold sweat. Yang Haicheng wiped his sweat and said to Lin Mo, Brother Lin, when the scope arrives, you must give me some. After graduation, I will take them to the army and also get some snipers out. Just you, are you still training snipers? Snipers don't just need to have a gun equipped with a scope. If you only have a gun, you have to choose the best among countless guns, and you also need to learn various sniper professional knowledge, which is not something you can cultivate. My third uncle works in the soldier training department, and when I give him the scope, they will naturally do it. You can choose a few people from your subordinates to send over. 
Yang Haiching nodded, knowing that Uncle Lin Mo was a general, and this matter was not a problem. Lin Mo's father, Lin Jinsong, was the eldest son of the family. He followed Lin Mo's grandfather in business from a young age and later took over the family's industry. His second uncle, Lin Jinda, was helped by his family to enter the officialdom. His third uncle, Lin Jintao, was devoted to saving the country from a young age and secretly went to Baoding Military Academy. Later, he joined the Northern Expedition Army and is now a general of the nationalist government. His fourth uncle, Lin Jinming, likes various Western machinery. Later, he went to study in the UK and is now a university professor. Because each of the four brothers of the Lin family has high achievements, this is also why Lin Mo can start preparing for the future shortly after arriving in this world. The knock on the door rang, and the three of them stopped talking. They asked the waiter to serve the dishes, and the few of them started eating. Chapter 8 Treasure Exploration Plan You are listening at NovelFull.audio While eating and chatting, Yang Haicheng and his companions asked Lin Mo about various theories and military knowledge of the Western military. As they spoke, Yang Haicheng mentioned landmine detectors and asked Lin Mo, Brother Lin, what's the use of buying landmine detectors? There aren't many people in China who use landmines, so buying them doesn't have much use. Upon hearing Yang Haicheng's inquiry, Lin Mo planned to tell them about the treasure hunt. Although Lin Mo knew the location of some treasures, he did not intend to spend them alone. He was not short of money. Lin Mo planned to use the name of Treasure Hunt to take out the money with his classmates and leave them a portion of their family wealth. It should be noted that many people in their class have poor family conditions. With this money, when the war broke out, they can be sent to the rear to settle down and save them worries. With this in mind, Lin Mo made a gesture and asked them to come over and speak quietly, so as not to be overheard by those with intentions. A few people gathered together and Lin Mo said, that thing is called a landmine detector in the military, but it is called a metal detector in the folk, originally intended for exploration, but the detection depth is not very deep, so it is rarely used. Isn't that useless to us? Yang Haicheng asked in confusion. Lin Mo glared at him and said, gold and silver are also metals. Zhao Pingyin continued, Chinese people like to bury money underground the most. Yang Haicheng suddenly realized and quickly lowered his voice, asking, where are we going to dig for treasure? Zhao Pingyin said, of course it's in the old houses of wealthy families. Li Changwu also said, what other cults, bandits and other abandoned dens, they like to hide money the most. If they catch it and get killed, they won't have a chance to retrieve that money. Yang Haicheng asked, How do you know? There used to be an old bandit cave not far away from our hometown, but it was just a small bandit. When we went to play when we were young, we dug a jar of money nearby, but there were only a few tails of silver inside, and the rest. It's copper coins. Lin Mo didn't expect that Li Changwu had actually dug up money, but it was even better. Yang Haicheng and Zhao Pingyin were both looking forward to it at this time. With this example, I believe everyone would be interested. Yang Haicheng quickly asked Lin Mo, Brother Lin, when should we go digging for treasures? Why don't we go now? The three of them turned their hot eyes to Lin Mo, but Lin Mo still said, We can't go today. We don't even know where to go, and there should be around ten detectors. We can't use them all. Let's go back tonight and call our class members, Ji Fong, and my cousin, and then call our chief instructor together. We may not be able to dig this thing. Bring the grill and food, and we'll just go on a field trip. Yes, we also need to bring our chief instructor with us. He likes these antiques, and if he could dig out one by himself, he would definitely be overjoyed. Yang Haicheng said quickly upon hearing this. The chief instructor among the two Lin Mo people is called Gong Qiming, who is equivalent to the class teacher of later generations. He was specifically in charge of Lin Mo and his team. He used to be the commander of the army and graduated from the Baoding Army Officer School. Later, 
he was transferred to the military academy as an instructor. His family used to be a home of books, and he has been exposed to various antiques since childhood. Therefore, he has been very interested in various antiques since childhood and enjoys collecting them. Gong Qiming was very kind to Lin Mo and Yang Haicheng at the military academy. The two of them were also tired of the food at the academy and often went to his house to grab food. They were very familiar with him, so he often told them about his various incidents of picking up treasures. Unfortunately, Yang Haicheng had no interest in antiques and would scold him loudly every time. Okay, let's talk to the teacher tonight and bring our classmates with us tomorrow. Later, I'll call Uncle Lu and ask him to prepare the tools and car for us. Lin Mo and the others stood up and paid before leaving the restaurant. Outside the restaurant, a few people continued to stroll on the street. After strolling for a while, Yang Haicheng asked Lin Mo again, Brother Lin, where are we going tomorrow? If you don't understand, I always feel uncertain. Lin Mo thought for a moment and said, The ancient Lin Temple on Mayanshan in the west of the city has been destroyed for many years. We can go there tomorrow and take a look. It's quite remote there, so there shouldn't be many people there. Yang Haicheng thought for a moment and then asked, Brother Lin, can treasures be buried in temples? There must be some. In times of chaos, many temples bury important things to avoid damage or loss from war. Some people also secretly bury treasures in temples to prevent people from finding them. There should be something inside. Lin Mo answered Yang Haicheng's question. Gulin Temple was built in Liang Dynasty and was then called Guanin Temple. It was renamed Gulin Temple during the Southern Song Dynasty. At the age of 20, Gu Exian abandoned the secular world and became a monk by shaving at Qixia Temple. Afterwards, he studied Buddhism and law. In the twelfth year of the Wanli reign of the Ming Dynasty, Gu Exian lived in Gu Lin and in Nanjing from north to south. At that time, Gu Linan had only three pillars and was a hundred feet square. Since Gu Exian's arrival, people seeking advice have been in constant flow. Gu Linan flourished, with one hundred blocks and one new one, becoming a great Buddhist temple. Emperor Wanli named it Jingu Xianlin Temple. Since modern times, Gu Lin Temple has been repeatedly damaged by war and fire, and has never been well restored. At the end of the Qing dynasty, the old monk Furin succeeded the 17th generation of the Buddhist seat of Gulin Temple, went through countless trials and tribulations, repaired the temple, and then passed down the ancestral teachings to suppress the style of the sect. Gulin Temple flourished again, and was once known as the Three Great Temples of Nanjing, along with Xianglin Temple and Pilu Temple. In the 26th year of the Guangxu reign, 1900, the ammunition depot behind Gulin Temple Mountain was struck by lightning, and the temple was destroyed. Fu Ren, the old monk, recruited people everywhere, repaired the temple, and then carried out the ancestral path of passing down the precepts, which suppressed the spirit of the Xinzong sect. Gu Lin Temple once again flourished in the world. In the 1930s, temples were once again destroyed in wars. Gu Lin Temple is located on Mayanshan in Jinling, covering an area of about 30 to 40 temples. He only remembered seeing reports in later generations that someone had discovered a batch of gold and silver on the site of Gulin Temple, and now that Gulin Temple has been destroyed in the war, he suggested that everyone go to Gulin Temple to explore the treasures. And Lin Mo remembered in a report that a trader had also dug up treasures nearby. The trader had searched for treasures in the mountains and forests of Qingliang Mountain, Pineapple Mountain, Mayanshan, Huayangang, Dingshan, and other places in the west of the city. Later, he became very wealthy. Lin Mo thought of digging up the treasure before the trader, and keeping it would also be a cheap deal for the trader. Yang Haicheng nodded in agreement after hearing this, no longer overthinking it. The few of them smoothly strolled the street, entering and exiting various shops, and had a good experience. After wandering for a while, the few people stopped entering the store and started walking along the main road. Yang Haicheng suddenly pointed to a person in front of the others wearing a grey outfit and said, Isn't that guy Chen Maofeng? Why are you dressed like this? 
Upon hearing these words, Zhao Pingyan asked, Chen Maofeng, who is it? It's the guy who looks like a dog we met at the entrance of Lin's trading house. Yang Haiching replied. Zhao Pingyan thought for a moment, then looked at the grey-clothed man in front of him and said, it looks quite similar from his back, but why did he change his clothes and leave his glasses on? Forget Haiching, let's just visit our own place. Upon hearing their conversation, Lin Mo fell in love and secretly observed each other along the way. After walking for a while, when passing by a shop decorated with glass, Lin Mo saw the other person tidying up their clothes in front of the glass. I followed the other party for a long time, but for some unknown reason, both sides kept walking one after another. In the middle, Lin Mo repeatedly noticed that the other party was using glass to observe behind them. At this moment, Lin Mo also realized that this was a counter-investigation. It seems that this guy is a spy, but it's unclear which side he belongs to. At this point, he should be trying to make contact. At this moment, Lin Mo felt that the other party should be an underground organization of our party and did not intend to follow anymore. Unfortunately, there was no excuse to walk to the doorstep of other parties. At this moment, Ido Tetsuro, who was in front of Lin Mo, did not know that Lin Mo had mistaken his identity and was secretly anxious for Lin Mo's followers. He had noticed Lin Mo and his companions as soon as they appeared behind him. He thought Lin Mo and his companions had just happened to pass by, but he followed him all the way, saying that he had exposed it but it didn't look like it. Because Lin Mo and his companions had no hidden signs, and his several counter-investigations did not attract their attention, Ido Tetsuro thought of a bold plan as he got closer to his target. He stopped in place to tidy up his clothes and then stood at a nearby small stall. I bought something. Lin Mo was wondering why the other party suddenly stopped, when he saw Tetsuro Ido looking over, he came up and said to Lin Mo, Hello, Mr. Lin, I'm Chen Mao Feng, the one who met Mr. Lin at the door of Lin's trade shop. He didn't know Mao Taishan and didn't greet Mr. Lin. Please don't take it amiss. Upon hearing Ido Tetsuro's words, Lin Mo understood. Isn't this trying to test a few people? Lin Mo waved his hand and said, It's okay, I don't know where Mr. Chen is going, why is he dressed up like this? Ido Tetsuro pretended to be embarrassed and continued, It's okay, Mr. Chen. If it's inconvenient, there's no need to say anything. Upon hearing this, Ido Tetsuro quickly said, No, no, it's just a family scandal. Don't laugh at me, young Master Lin. I have a good relationship in Nanjing, but my family members don't like this. When I left home, I even had someone follow me around, which is why every time I come out, it's like this, making young Master Lin. Lin Emo waved his hand and planned to leave with the three of them first. Looking for Xu Yuan www.jiaoshuyuan.com, unfortunately, the vendor had packed their things and the five of them had to go on the road together. Along the way, Ido Zhilong and Lin Mo chatted haphazardly. When they arrived at an alley, Ido Zhilong said to Lin Mo, Lin Gongzi, I'm here. Do you want to come in and have a cup of tea? Lin Moyao looked away and walked forward with the three of them. Before leaving, Lin Moyao glanced at the entrance of the alley and saw the three words, Qingma Lane, before leaving with the three of them. As Lin Mo walked, he thought to himself, feeling that Chen Mao Feng was a bit strange. It seemed that there were many conflicts with the people in our party's underground organization in his later memories, but he did not find any doubts. In the end, it could only be attributed to what might have been wrong in the later records. He stopped thinking and calmly strolled around with a few people. On the other side, Ido Tetsuro walked into Qingma Lane for a while and then returned to the entrance to observe. He saw Lin Mo and his companions walking far away and there were no abnormalities in the surroundings before walking back into the alley. After walking more than ten times, Ido Tetsuro arrived at the entrance of a courtyard. After knocking a few times in a regular manner, the gate opened a crack. The people inside saw that it was Ido Tetsuro and opened the door. Ido Tetsuro immediately jumped into the courtyard and breathed a sigh of relief. 
A beautiful woman walked out of the inner room and looked at him in disgust. She asked, Tetsuro Ito, what happened? Did I bring what I wanted? Upon hearing the question, Tetsuro Ito immediately explained, No, no, I just ran into a few military academy students at the alley. Everything you need is ready. Upon hearing Tetsuro Ito's account, the woman's disgust intensified and she cursed, a few military academy students have scared you like this, you're such a waste. Upon hearing the woman's angry scolding, Tetsuro Ito dared not say a word and could only quietly leave with a face full of helplessness. Chapter 9 Exploring Treasures You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lin Mo and his companions wandered on Zhongshan Road until the afternoon. After finding a restaurant to have a meal, Lin Mo called Uncle Lu to inquire about Scott's goods and asked Uncle Lu to help prepare the cars and tools needed for tomorrow's outing. The group then called a yellow charter car and returned to Old Zheng's shop. They greeted Old Zheng, picked up military uniforms, and returned to the military academy. A few people arrived at the dormitory, and Aliji Muren and Lu Yixuan had already returned to the dormitory. Lu Yixuan saw that Lin Mo and the others had returned and asked, Where have you all gone and why are you only coming back now? Upon hearing Lu Yixuan's question, Yang Haicheng couldn't help it anymore. Although Lin Mo was a good friend, he had always disliked talking and only liked to read quietly alone. Li Changwu and Zhao Pingyan were also stirred up by the treasure hunt today, and their hearts had already flown to the treasure hunt. There was no reason to gossip with him. At this moment, when someone asked, they talked about today's events like pouring beans. Lin Mo and the others watched him speak and sat on the chair in the dormitory listening to him. After more than ten minutes, his voice became hoarse. Finally, Yang Haicheng finished speaking and quickly picked up a glass of water next to him, took a deep sip, and let out a satisfied voice. Lin Mo and the five of them burst into laughter. Brother Lin, is it true that you said you're going to explore treasures tomorrow? Is the metal detector you bought reliable? Lin Mo replied to Lu Yixuan's question, as long as it's metal, it can be detected. This thing is used to detect landmines, and it's a new type of fissure detector. This type of detector is much stronger than the old bell detector. As long as the treasure is metal, it should not be difficult to find. Upon hearing Lin Mo's words, Lu Yixuan was also full of excitement. In fact, everyone has a strong interest in digging treasures, after all, who doesn't like things that are picked for nothing? Upon hearing this, Oliji Muren leaned over and said, Brother Lin, what you're saying is true. There are also many treasures in Xinjiang, but unfortunately, we didn't understand before and they were dug up by foreigners for nothing. As he spoke, Oliji Muren also had a painful expression on his face, as Xinjiang is a heavily affected area for foreigners to explore and search for treasures. Yeah, many of your treasures can be buried under the dry yellow sand for many years, but they have been taken advantage of by those foreigners. Forget it, Li Gu, Zhao Gu, Yi Xian, and Mu Ren, you four should inform our class. Hai Cheng, you can go meet Ji Feng and my cousin, and I will tell our chief instructor that we will go explore the treasures together tomorrow. Okay, Lin Mo, you are quite familiar with the chief instructor. You can go talk to the chief instructor, Li Changwu said to Lin Mo. In their dormitory, Li Changwu is the oldest, Zhao Pingyan is the second, Lin Mo is the third, Yang Haicheng is the fourth, Lu Yixuan is the fifth, Oliji Muren is the youngest, and he is the sixth. They have been together for almost three years and are no longer just roommates and comrades in arms. They are usually considered brothers. Lin Mo explained a few more words to the others, then walked to the office of the chief instructor Gong Qiming. Outside the office, he knocked on the door and only heard a loud voice. Come in. Upon hearing the sound, Lin Mo opened the door and walked in. Gong Qiming looked like it was Lin Mo and asked, Lin Mo, why haven't you been here lately? Your mother is still nagging me to come to the office to have dinner with you. If you come to the office today to find me, you don't usually come to the office. 
Upon hearing Gong Qiming's words, Lin Mo also realized that he had never come to find him before. Gong Qiming could be considered his teacher, and it was hard to justify not coming for several days. Thinking of this, Lin Mo apologized and said, Teacher, I've seen some news these past few days and my heart is very restless. I've been thinking about things, so I haven't come. Lin Mo was telling the truth. Over the past few days, Lin Mo has always been thinking about the war in a few years. Otherwise, with Lin Mo's personality, he wouldn't have forgotten such important things. Upon hearing Lin Mo's answer, Gong Qiming frowned and asked, You didn't hear about sending you to participate in the encirclement and suppression of the Red Army, did you? Those things are not something you can participate in. Upon hearing Gong Qiming's question, Lin Moyao looked away and said, It's not that thing. I enjoy reading various foreign newspapers and information. During this time, I feel that the atmosphere between countries around the world is a bit strange, as if something is about to happen. Upon hearing Lin Mo's words, Gong Qiming furrowed his brow again. He couldn't think of any strange things in the international community, so he said to Lin Mo, tell me about it. Lin Mo nodded and continued, after the new German Chancellor came to power, he used various methods to overcome the economic crisis. Now, he has started to expand his military and develop military industry, and the public has also begun to speak of war, washing away the shame of World War I. Britain has also started to develop military technology, France is also heavily defending Germany's Maginot Line, and the United States is practicing isolationism. In Asia, Japan is also expanding its military extensively, and the public is howling. However, in Japan, the spirit of Bushido is prevalent, and asterisk 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 is everywhere, shouting to attack China. The Japanese army in China is also frequently provoking, and various conflicts continue. From a global perspective, these countries have all begun to. I suspect that a new world war has already begun to brew, and China may also be a battlefield, as we are reorganizing the military and expanding our armaments after listening to Lin Mo finish speaking, Gong Qiming suddenly understood. In fact, Gong Qiming was not so clear about foreign affairs, but in recent years, the nationalist government has also accelerated the rectification and training of the military. Some armies have started to change their equipment and guns. Gong Qiming thought it was a leader to deal with the Red Party, but some did not enter the battlefield. It seems that the nationalist government has also begun to prepare, even his own students have realized that something is wrong, but he has no reaction. Gong Qiming sighed in his heart and advised Lin Mo, just know these things, don't think too much. All you can do now is do yourself well. Upon hearing the teacher's words, Lin Mo nodded and said, I know the teacher, I have already figured it out. Gong Qiming nodded. He knew that his student was very intelligent, and he didn't need to say too much to understand. You didn't come here to talk about this, did you? If there's anything, just say it. Gong Qiming knew that the incident just now was a private matter, so he wasn't in a hurry. Lin Mo rarely talked to him about private matters in the office, so there must be other things to attend to when he came today. Upon hearing Gong Qiming's inquiry, Lin Mo quickly said, Teacher, when I went out today, I bought some new metal detectors from a friend. I thought I could bring them over to explore treasures. Teacher, don't you like all kinds of antiques, so I invited you to come with us. Lin Mo told Gong Qiming the truth about the treasure hunt and buying a gun from Scott. Upon hearing Lin Mo's talk about treasure exploration, Gong Qiming immediately became interested. It should be noted that he was already very fond of antiques, not to mention personally taking out dusty treasures from the ground. He discussed in detail with Lin Mo about tomorrow's treasure excavation and stayed in Gong Qiming's office for almost an hour before saying goodbye to him. Lin Mo could see that the teacher was very fond of this matter. Lin Mo returned to the dormitory and talked about the teacher's situation with a few people. They then went to rest, intending to rest and stay energized for the treasure hunt the next day. The next morning, Lin Mo was awakened by Yang Haicheng and others. Looking at the excited faces of the group, 
Lin Mo felt a little excited and quickly went to the bathroom to wash his clothes. He found that his classmates had all gotten up and greeted everyone. After returning to the dormitory, a few people changed into old Zhongshan suits and went out to gather with people from other dormitories. When they arrived at the venue, they found that even Gong Qiming had arrived. They quickly took everyone out of the school gate and went to Mr. Zhang's house to have breakfast. They then rushed to the Lin's trading house with everyone. Thirty or so yellow vans lined up in a long line on the street, becoming a sight on the street. Not long after, everyone arrived at Lin's trading company. They quickly got off the bus, and manager Huang, who was waiting outside the door, immediately greeted them and led them to the hall. Manager Huang asked everyone to sit down in the seats in the hall and then found Lin M.O., saying, Young master, the car and the grills, food, and tools you wanted are ready. I also prepared some water and kettles for you. The foreigner also delivered the goods you wanted. Do you think you need to prepare anything else? Upon hearing this, Lin M.O. said, No need, Uncle Huang. Hurry up and take me over. After hearing Lin Mo's words, Huang Xingming nodded and greeted everyone to walk towards the backyard. The backyard of the commercial firm was actually the warehouse. Huang Xingming led everyone to the warehouse and saw four large trucks parked in the center of the courtyard, all covered in capes. Huang Xingming pointed to the truck at the far end and said to Lin Mo, Young master, this car is filled with those things, and the other few are used for sitting well. The things Scott sent are in the nearby warehouse. Upon hearing Huang Xingming's words, Lin Mo thought for a moment and said to Yang Haicheng beside him, Haicheng, take a few people to move the detectors, guns, and ammunition from the warehouse to the car. We'll all try the guns then. Yang Haicheng nodded when he heard Lin Mo's words and turned around to find a few people to move things from the warehouse. By the way, young master, when Scott delivered the goods yesterday, he said he had given you several sets of telescopes and observation glasses. Upon hearing Huang Xingming's supplement, Lin Mo nodded to indicate that he understood. He then talked to Gong Qiming and introduced Huang Xingming to the teacher. Unfortunately, Lu Xu was not here today, so if he was there, he could introduce Lu Xu to the teacher. If he went to the military and had something to do, he could ask Lu Xu to relay it to the teacher. Lin Mo and Gong Qiming have a teacher-student relationship, which is extremely important in the Republic of China. Gong Qiming and other students only have a relationship between instructors and students, serving as teachers for a day and as fathers for a lifetime. It is not an exaggeration to describe Gong Qiming and Lin Mo as family members. Having the familiar classmates get on the first car and lead the way, Lin Mo instructed the teacher to get on the passenger seat of the second car and called everyone to board. Everyone got on the car, and Lin Mo also got on the driver's cab of the second car and gestured to the first car, indicating that it was ready to depart and also started. The sound of the car starting echoed one after another, and the four cars drove out of the warehouse door one by one, heading towards the west of the city from the street. Along the way, Lin Mo and his teacher Gong Qiming had a haphazard conversation. After a while, several cars arrived at the city gate. Lin Mo saw the car in front of him stop and quickly stopped at Xuyuan, www.jiaoshuyuan.com. He saw several people in Zhongshan suits gathered around him, calling for inspection fraudulently. The people sitting in the carriage also extended their heads to check. Gong Qiming waved to the people and said they were okay, and they also went back to sit down. Lin Mo was not sure what had happened, and he felt relieved when he saw the teacher's gesture. The inspector saw Gong Qiming's gesture and walked over. Gong Qiming took out his ID from his body and handed it out. The person standing next to the car was about to reach out for it. A person who looked like a small head quickly grabbed him, reached out his hands to take the ID, flipped through his eyes, and quickly handed it back. He said, Director Gong, do you know what's the urgent matter when you leave the city so early? No, just take the students out for a while to play. He then took the ID from the leader's hand and gestured to the car to start. 
the little leader dared not stop and quickly signaled for his subordinates to let go. Lin Mo and his team drove out of the city gate and headed towards their destination, without paying attention to the small incident that happened at the city gate. At the entrance of the city, the person who had just been stopped asked the little leader, Captain, what kind of people are those? They are so arrogant. The little captain glared at him and said, those are students from the military academy. That person was the school's training director just now. Seeing the person's indifferent demeanor, he continued, don't be indifferent. That director's family is a colonel, and the students in those cars are not something we can afford to provoke. Don't look at me as a lieutenant. As soon as they graduate, they will become a lieutenant officer. Don't think that you are a relative of the team leader. If you can avoid military academy students next time, you can avoid them. Those people are not someone we can't do without military academies. If you provoke someone, maybe the one who troubles you will have half a school students. The person was also scared when he heard this, thinking about the officers in those cars, his back felt a chill. Chapter 10 Exploring Treasures in Gulin Temple You are listening at NovelFull.audio Not to mention what happened at the city gate, Lin M.O. and others were driving on a desolate road. As Gulin Temple was once a major temple in Nanjing, everyone could drive along the road all the way to the ruins of Gulin Temple, greatly saving Lin M.O. and others' time. When they arrived at Gulin Temple, Lin M.O. looked up and saw that it was very large, covering an area of 20 to 30 temples. Unfortunately, it had been completely destroyed by the war. Over the past decade, apart from a few walls and their roots, there was no longer anything from the past. Gulin Temple was built halfway up the mountain, and Lin Mo and others were in an open space under Gulin Temple, surrounded by some tall ancient trees. The car stopped next to an ancient tree. Everyone also got off the car with an excited expression on their faces. Seeing everyone getting off the car, Lin M.O. called some people to the cart where they were pulling things, unloaded their belongings, and stacked firearms and ammunition aside. Lin M.O. saw a box that was different from the others, so he went over and opened it. Inside, there were four telescopes and things like periscopes in later times, which should be what Scott called observation glasses. Lin M.O. took out a telescope and put it on, then closed the box. After thinking for a moment, he put the telescope on the box again. Seeing that several people had already moved down the pickaxe, small shovel and shovel, Lin M.O. hurriedly called people to open the box containing the detector. Lin M.O. looked into the box. It was not very different from the detectors of later generations, but it was more bulky. Lin M.O. took a detector and tried it on his hand. It was much heavier. He took a battery from another box to install the detector. He opened the switch and scanned the shovel, and heard a sound. It seemed that there was no problem. Gong Qiming had been standing by Lin Mo's side all along. He still had some doubts about the detector in his heart, but after seeing Lin Mo's demonstration just now, he also stepped forward and picked up a detector. Ji Fong had been following Lin Mo all along. He was from the engineering department and heard the instructor mention the detector during class. He was also very interested in the detector. When he saw the teacher come forward, he quickly followed suit. Lin M.O. tried using the detector and saw that the teacher and Ji Fong were also using it. He said to his classmates, hurry up, everyone. Form your own team, three or four people, come and pick it up on your own. If you don't know how to use it, Ask Ji Fong. Lin Gu, I'll work with you. Lu Yixuan and Aliji Muren heard Lin Mo's words and said repeatedly. Lin Mo nodded as they listened. When they formed a team in the military academy, they always liked to follow Lin Mo. They were the youngest in the class, and Lin Mo usually took good care of them. Lin Mo watched as Yang Haicheng and others formed a team so he called the teacher and asked Lu Yixuan and Aliji Muren to bring tools and walk towards Gulin Temple. Brother Lin, do you think we can dig up treasures? Upon hearing Aliji Muren's inquiry, Lin Mo pretended to think for a moment and replied, it should be possible. 
This ancient temple existed in the Song dynasty, and over the years, something should have been left behind. Lin Mo remembers that in later news, only a dozen jars of gold and silver were dug up, and he is not sure if there are any other things. There must be something. This temple has existed in the Song dynasty. I don't know how many wars it has experienced. There must be something buried. Lin Mo nodded when he heard the teacher's words. People like to bury valuable things most during the war. If someone has an accident, there will be few opportunities to dig out the buried things. In addition, during the war, the temple will also become the garrison of some disorderly soldiers. The monks and soldiers in the temple will hide things in it. Because many temples are built on the mountains, and there are few people around, it is a good place to hide treasures. Moreover, Nanjing is known as the ancient capital of the Six Dynasties, and has always been it is an important city in the Yangtze River Basin. I don't know how many treasures are buried underground. As they spoke, several people walked into the old site of Gulin Temple. Although it had been abandoned for over a decade, the ground was covered with bricks and fallen temple walls, and there were not many weeds. Some ancient trees were still alive, but more had been cut down, leaving only decaying tree stumps. Lin Mo remembers that reports from later generations revealed the discovery of a treasure under the wall, so he turned on the detector to detect it in the corner of the wall. Gong Qiming saw Lin Mo detect it and also chose a location nearby to detect it. Drip. The sound sounded, and Lin Mo tried twice more to determine the position. He then squatted down and took away the bricks and stones above. Lu Yixuan and his companions saw Lin Mo's movements and immediately ran up with tools, asking, Brother Lin, how can we dig? Let's dig together with you. Seeing the two of them, Lin Mo nodded, stood up, picked up the detector, and then explored the area where it had just sounded. Drip said to the two of them, just dig towards the noisy area and put aside the soil you've dug out. Some things are too small for you to see, so I'll dig them for a while and see if I've dug them. The two nodded and then continued digging, creating a pit. Okay, take the shovel away, let me explore. When the two of them took the shovel away, they shook the detector in the pit for a while. There was no sound, and then shook it on the excavated pile of soil. The sound rang again. The two of them quickly searched and soon found two copper coins. Lin Mo shook the detector again on the pile of soil, but there was no sound. The two of them looked disappointed. Upon hearing the commotion, Gong Qiming and other classmates also gathered around. Gong Qiming took the copper coins from the hands of Mu Ren and wiped them, glanced at them a few times, and said, This is from the Qianlong period. It seems that there will indeed be many good things here. Don't worry. This should only be the falling pilgrims, not buried. Don't be discouraged. After listening to the teacher's words, Mu Ren and his companions also recovered. The classmates around saw it and quickly searched for a place to detect it. Lin Mo also began to explore along the wall again, and Gong Qiming was also exploring nearby. The two of them were exploring on both sides of the wall. In no time, their detectors made sounds one after another. Mu Ren went to help the teacher, and Lin Mo and Lu Yixuan quickly dug up. Soon, they dug out a nail from the soil, which greatly disappointed them. Lin Mo picked up the detector and explored the pit, only to find that there was still a sound. While digging, Lin Mo found that the thing was very deep. He then used a shovel to expand the pit and continued to dig deep, digging for about half a meter. Lin Mo felt that the shovel had hit a hard object, carefully shoveled open the soil, and saw a golden piece of material. Lu Yixuan was just responsible for moving the soil dug by Lin Mo to the other side, but he kept paying attention to the pit dug by Lin Mo. When he saw what was dug out, he quickly asked, Is this gold? I guess so, I don't quite understand, but after being buried in the soil for so long, it's still golden. It should be gold, Lin Mo said as he dug. The golden thing also appeared, not in the shape of a block, but a small circular jar that was about 20 centimeters straight, with a lid on top. 
Lin Mo quickly cleared the soil around the jar and took it out. This time, Lin Mo saw clearly that the jar was about 10 centimeters high, with a mouth diameter of about 20 centimeters. The entire body of the jar was smooth, without any patterns or words engraved. When he opened the jar, Lin Mo tried the lid with his hand and found that it was not very tight. With a little force, he opened the jar. Lin Mo looked into the jar and saw some decorations and soil inside, but did not see anything else. Lin Mo turned to Lu Yixuan and said, Yixuan, hurry up and find something to put on top. I'll pour out the contents and go to the truck. I'll also bring a bucket over to load the things. Lu Yixuan quickly ran towards the car after hearing this. Dong Qiming's side had already finished for a while, and when he saw that Lin Mo had dug up good things again, he also approached. Seeing the teacher coming over, Lin Mo handed the jar to the teacher and asked, Teacher, is this gold? Dong Qiming took the jar and shook it in his hand, then replied, It must be gold. With so much pressure on his hand, you can't feel it. You've forgotten everything you've learned in the past few years. Lin Mo quickly shook his hand and replied, Teacher, I haven't forgotten. I just don't quite understand what I dug out. I'll ask for your opinion. Humph. Gong Qiming snorted coldly, very dissatisfied with Lin Mo's defense. Brother Lin, here's the thing. Lu Yixuan called out after a distance. Lin Mo looked up and Lu Yixuan had already run to him. Lin Mo quickly said, Put down the thing quickly, let's see what's inside. He took the canvas and bucket from Lu Yixuan's hand, put them aside, spread the canvas on the ground, and then took the jar from the teacher's hand, carefully pouring out the two things inside and placing them on the canvas. Inside were many gold jewelry, as well as some jade and jadeite. Lin Mo and others stood up and picked out the jewelry to put aside. Lin Mo picked up a jade bracelet and wiped it clean. The entire bracelet was green and free of any impurities. When placed in his hand, it was like a natural and unadorned craft. However, Lin Mo does not have much research on jade, and the teacher has never mentioned jade before. Lin Mo's feeling towards this bracelet is only a simple appreciation, a love for beautiful things, and he is not clear about the value of this thing. So he asked the teacher, Teacher, I think this bracelet is good, but I don't know much about jade. Can you help me take a look? Upon hearing Lin Mo's inquiry, Gong Qiming looked up at the bracelet in Lin Mo's hand and said, Not bad, you have a good eye. He then reached out and took the jade in Lin Mo's hand, carefully flipped it over and said, This should be a jade with eye seeds full of green, very good. So, Coach Gong, how much is this thing worth? Lu Yixuan asked when he heard Gong Qiming's words. After hearing this, Dong Qiming gave Lu Yixuan a fierce glare, which made Lin Yixuan look embarrassed. He then said, Why do you only know money? Is such a good thing for sale? Upon hearing that Dong Qiming was a bit angry, Lu Yixuan quickly went to the Shuyuan website www.chaoshuyuan.com and replied, Instructor Gong, I didn't mean that. I just wanted to ask what his value was. Lin Mo and Aliji Muren also quickly persuaded Gong Qiming to calm down and continue, this is a treasure that can be passed down to many families, at least worth tens of thousands of dollars. Hurry up and find something to wrap it up, so as not to damage it. Lu Yixuan heard this and quickly ran to the car. Lin Mo and Aliji Muren became even more interested after hearing this, and quickly picked up the remaining items. Later, they also discovered some jade artifacts, but their quality was not as good as the bracelet they had just received, so they set them aside. Lu Yixuan took back a box and a piece of canvas from the car. Several people cut the canvas into small pieces, wrapped the jade articles and put them in the box. After several people counted, there were more than ten pieces of jade articles. But except one jade bracelet, which was a large one, others were all jade cigarette holders, jade clasps, some were hotan jade, some were jade, and some were jade. In addition, there were a pile of gold and silver ornaments, 
which were put back into the gold jar by several people and put into the bucket together. Lin M.O. remembered that the teacher had also dug something earlier and asked, Teacher, what did you dig just now? Upon hearing the inquiry, Gong Qiming replied, It's just a copper seal, rusted, and I don't know whose it belongs to. After saying that, he asked Aliji Murin to show it to him. Lin M.O. took it over to take a look, but didn't see anything significant. He looked up and wanted to ask the teacher, but unfortunately Gong Qiming had already gone back and continued to explore. Lin Mo also lost interest and put the copper seal back into the bucket to continue exploring. After the discovery just now, Lin Mo's interest was also aroused. He originally thought that there would be no other big gains except for the treasures reported in future news, but he didn't expect to dig up so much more. It seems that future news has not been fully reported. With this in mind, Lin Mo quickly picked up the detector and started to explore again.